If you've been building anything serious in VAPI, inbound routing, outbound calls, then this update is actually worth paying attention to. We're talking about workflows, a feature that VAPI recently updated, and it lets you build voice AI agents in a way that resemble a flowchart, which can really ease the development process and just make it easier to see how the flow of the discussion is cascading. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with workflows, why it is relevant, and actually building a first little project together. If we haven't met yet, I am Mo from Sonar AI, and we build voice AI agents for small to medium-sized businesses. And if any of this sounds interesting to you, then I invite you for a free consultation. I leave links in the description, so go grab it if it's interesting to you. With that said, let's get building. I figure we'll start from the documentation of VAPI because they actually lay really well how workflows are working. And as I mentioned before, they look like a flowchart. So you can see that you generally have a initial prompt or let's say a node. And from it, you're able to pretty much cascade depending on how the conversation is flowing. So you have visual control in how you can pretty much work with your agent, which is pretty cool. So it's a bit easier, I guess, mentally to visualize the different workflows instead of just seeing them all in one prompt. And as they see, the key benefits are visual conversational conversation builder. I mean, makes sense. You get to see what you're building and it's easier also for complex flows of, let's say, discussion flows. And, and what I found most interesting as a use case is actually this multilingual support. So you're able, I would imagine to say, you start with an English workflow and depending on the language that the user is actually going to speak, you then can cascade to the different languages and tailor your prompt in a way that it's actually built thinking of, let's say the language, instead of having just a multilingual agent, which can speak all the languages, but maybe not the best at it. You can actually have now like perhaps multilingual in the beginning and then cascade into different, let's say specialized language prompts, which is pretty interesting. So yeah, one can imagine that the common use cases can be using user intent management to understand like what are they kind of looking for and then human escalation. So that means that we're able to pretty much transfer to human whenever the agent flags, hey, I need a human. Multilingual flows, as I mentioned, and customer specific flows. So yeah, I think with that said, that's enough theory. We can now get into the practical piece of it. First things first, I to show you where workflows are, you need to go into VAPI. I mean, if you haven't signed up, please do so. And once you're logged in, you can kind of see them under the assistance tab. So not within the assistance, you find them in a different tab, which is called workflows. And I mean, I already like started one, but let's actually delete it and start from scratch. Amazing. So let's create a workflow. And as you can see, there is already like some cool predefined prompts or sorry, workflows, which you can choose from. In this case, I just want to go blank just to show you how, let's say I would start it and let's call it work. Low. And what I was thinking to do is to build a multilingual agent actually. So we're able to kind of like route the user based on the language that they speak. So what I do have is So what I do have is a prompt. It's actually a real estate prompt. I think it could have been better if it was a hotel prompt, but we can make it work. So we can imagine, so in this case, it's a fictitious company. I called it, what would I call it? Crownstone Property Group and Anne is our assistant and it's based in London, England. So you can imagine that in London, England, a lot of people speak different languages, although it's English, but still you want to cater to an international audience. So really the prompt is designed to just give information about the company and about, let's say, what is the process for sellers and what is the process for buyers. So not a very complex prompt with some examples. But what we want to do is perhaps to add that this prompt or to tell the, let's say, initial prompt that it is an English prompt and it can speak a few languages. And then depending on the language, then we kind of like build these nodes. So perhaps we can add it specifics. Yeah, let's add it into the role. You are a multilingual assistant speaking English. Sorry, let's say Spanish, German, and Italian. You ask 
the user what is their preferred language or rather let's say please start by asking the user what is their preferred language all right so we pretty much yeah so we said that it speaks english spanish german and italian and then it will ask let's say what is the preferred language to be spoken in discussion amazing so i will go ahead take this prompt and then go into workflows up oh, here here rather and there is so here we have the introduction let's call it initial prompt then here we put the prompt sec then we have conversation so it's note type so what is note type note type is pretty much what is the node going to be about so in this case it's a conversation so we want to kind of like transfer the it's a or start with this agent and then we transfer to the let's say different languages based on what let's say the user chooses so let's add other conversations so here for example okay have it here and if user let's say wants to speak in spanish so what we do here is we take this then we also provide it Actually, what we can do is probably smarter. It would be to make like we don't have to have all the information here. We can just like ask the user, hey, what is the language that you want to speak? We are such and such real estate agency. And you can then uh, kind of direct the users based on the language that you want to speak. I mean, you can kind of like clean that up. So I probably should have done that in the beginning. But for now, you I mean, we can continue. But yeah, you can probably simplify this prompt a lot more based on, let's say, the requirements that you wanted to yeah, have. But anyways, what we'll do here, for example, is yeah, now we can kind of like say you are, I don't know what is a Spanish lady name. Uh, let's just call it Sarah. Sara or without an H H tends to feel a bit more a bit more English, I guess. So you are a multi let's now say that you are a Spanish speaking Spanish speaking assistant. And I would rather put it here in the beginning. You're Sarah because or rather, it's okay. You are a Spanish speaking assistant. You speak to users in Spanish. Okay. And what we do then, so also to give you a quick look, actually first, first, maybe I don't speak Spanish, but I guess it's, no. Hola, hola, como, I get, I don't know. How can I help you in Spanish translation? Let's put and see that. How can I help you? Maybe let's put the question mark. Okay. So, le puedo ayudar en algo. Okay. So, oh, there would be some como, but there is not como. Anyways, so we, we, we go to the, so you can see here, like there is some settings and we have like global node. A uh, global node is pretty much like one global node, which I think we can actually toggle this to make it accessible. Oh no, okay, sorry. Like this would make this the global node. Probably we want this to be the global node. So I would kind of like revert this back in case we need to go back to it. And so what's interesting is that we can actually set like settings for each node. So that means that in this case, we can set like, for example, hey, we want a for a cluster or we want something else. So it's actually very customizable, which is quite exciting. But what we want to see is the voice settings and we need to go to 11 labs and then we said sir yeah that's good how to detect we want spanish spanish yes amazing and let's just try that actually let's try it, yeah hey there hey hello what is your preferred language for our conversation yeah i can assist you in english spanish german or italian spanish please hola le puedo ayudar en algo no no me puede ayudar porque okay, no. en que... okay that's enough <laughs> Okay, cool. So you got the idea. So pretty much we told it, hey, like you put here the, like you segment, which language do you want? And now we can pretty much do the same thing here. So I'll duplicate, blah, 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 here, voila. And then we attach, oops, attach it here. Come on. Yes. And user, so let's say if user wants to speak, let's make it speak Italian because that's easy for me. So user wants to speak Italian. And then we come here, ciao. And then we go here and we say, Sarah, you speak in 
happy I'm not even speaking. Nope, amazing. Then we say I am speaking and we go into the voice setting. You get the gist of it. And then you say from Spanish, you say it, Italian, save. I mean, we can also probably name it nicer, <laughs> not just conversation. ET. Yeah, let's just say it, ET. And here we can say yes. And we can say like duplicate, it's tuck. Then we say if user speaks German voice. And then we go here. Oh, my German now is going to be judged. Hello? Wie kann ich? No, it's ich. Ihnen helfen, I think. Nah. Helfen. Okay, good. Then we do the same thing here. We go in German. And German. Amazing. Save. And boom. Is there a way to tidy it up? I guess not. Okay. That would be a cool feature. Like, you know, being used to an A10 and make it, you can have like that button to clean up. Anyways, let's try it out. Hey there. Which language do you want me to assist you with? English, Spanish, German, Italian. Yeah, I speak Italian. Ciao, come posso aiutarti? All right, yeah, you got the idea. So that pretty much transfers to the corresponding language based on what you say. So it's pretty cool that you can, let's say, put conditionals in just like natural language and it just recognizes it and then it brings you there. So that is a pretty neat feature of workflows. That was it for this initial introductory video to workflows. Wanted to give a simple understanding of what the feature is capable to do, get you to try it. And in future videos, we're going to build more complex workflows. So you do not want to miss those out. And yeah, I invite you to subscribe to keep following. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And I'm also happy to have you on a call. I offer free links in the description for a consultation. So go grab that. With that said, I thank you for your attention and I see you in the next video.